All right, the news broke this morning that Jake Paul has signed with the PFL, the Professional Fighters League. And the relevant thing about that is that the PFL is a mixed martial arts organization. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you read the title correctly. I've officially signed as an MMA fighter to the PFL, baby. So you just a big gangster now, right? You're a big gangster. <laughs> Jake Paul, a massive YouTuber, very, very famous guy, very wealthy guy, 6-0 and in boxing, okay? Says that he's going to beat everyone in boxing. He's going to beat Canelo Alvarez. Everybody calls you Uzman. Yeah, everybody Jay. wants a penny. Hey, they. <laughs> he's going to become the boxing champion of the world. Now we're switching over to mixed martial arts, isn't it? And he's still doing the same old thing, calling out guys that aren't his size. Right, so Jay Paul, 6-0 as a boxer, but hasn't fought a single boxer yet, right? There's lots to talk about here. First of all, it sounds like I'm hating on Jake Paul. I'm not hating on him. I don't know him. I've got nothing against him. I wish him all the best. But I've said it a million times. He's not fighting real fighters. As fighters, we want to test ourselves. We want to go up against some of the best people that we can. And as you get better and better, you earn these opportunities. Jake Paul has the opportunity because he is a big star. If he went up against somebody that was a world championship boxer or world caliber level, he could attract them because he's a big star and there's a lot of money to be earned. But he doesn't want to do that. And in boxing, or this fake boxing which he's doing, he's run out of steam. Because the second fight with Tyron Woodley, apparently the pay-per-view numbers were terrible. The fight with Anderson Silva was terrible, okay, in terms of pay-per-view. It wasn't a bad boxing match. Jake Paul beat him. I thought Anderson would beat him, even though he's old. He's what? What is, what is Anderson now? 47 or something crazy like that. I think he's 47. Maybe not. Yeah, he's 47, yeah. So, you know, he's pushing 50. I was doing this when the Jay was on his father's nutsack. Anyway, Jay beat him. Jay beat him fair and square. God bless him. But Anderson Silva's pushing 50, okay? And that pay-per-view didn't perform well either, right? And it doesn't get much better than that. If you're looking for a guy in mixed martial arts that you can fight that's going to pull in a crowd, Anderson Silva was the one. I mean, he defended the belt more times than anybody, I think, with the exception of maybe Demetrius Johnson. But either way, he was a long, long, long time champion, okay? And if he can't pull, if they can't do pay-per-view numbers with Jake Paul and Anderson Silva, what does that tell you? It tells you it's over. It's done. That experiment, that fake, that little exploitation of former UFC fighters isn't doing it for them anymore. They're not making the money that they aspire to. He's a partner in your burning money business? That's awesome. So they've had to pivot. So now they've signed with the PFL. And remember, Jake Paul was talking about fighters' unions and all the rest of it and wanting wanting uh, Dana to give up more money to the fighters. And of course, I support all fighters making as much money as possible. But that was never his uh, mission, you know, that was just bullshit. And now we signed with the PFL, signed with the PFL in a super league, right? Where the revenue is going to get split 50-50. But not for the average guys in the PFL. Now, I'm not here to criticize the PFL. They can run their business however they see fit. I've got nothing against them. I know some of the guys that run it, good set of people, doing a good job. You know, they have great fighters there. Brendan Lofton just won one of the tournaments. Good friend of mine. Love the guy. Incredible fighter. Nothing bad to say. And they run their business the way they want to run it. Now Jake Paul's come on board, okay? And he's doing the Super League because he's too good for the regular league. So he's doing the Super League. And only those people in the Super League are going to get or be privy to the 50% revenue share. So unless you're good enough to be in the Super League, if you're just a regular fighter over there uh, in that little, little, little crappy category, you don't get the revenue share. So Jake Paul, once again, you're full of shit, bro. You're just looking out for yourself, which is fine. We're all trying to look out for ourselves. We really are. But stop making out that you are the life savior and the spearheading this movement for fighters. You're just trying to get ahead in life. And that's fine. But it's the fact that you make out that you are, ooh, you're looking out for the fighters. No, you're not. You're just doing what's right for you and what's correct by you. And that's fine because we're all doing the same thing, okay? But stop with the act. Stop with the charade, okay? Now, of course, when it comes to the actual the boxing or the fighting, once again, he's calling out Nate Diaz. Hey, I'm not surprised. He's made him a two-fight offer. 
one in boxing, then six months later in mixed martial arts. And again, it's the same old story, isn't it? Same old story because Nate Diaz fought almost all of his fights at 155, in a few at 170. But he's a lightweight generally. Okay, he's a lightweight. Jay Paul weighs over 200 pounds, right? And I've been through this. It's every single time I talk about it. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, he's a boxer, right? And he wants to go first because he'll probably knock Nate Diaz out or beat him at the very least in a boxing fight. That's not me being a Nate Diaz hater. That's just what my analysis tells me. And it's what your analysis would tell you as well. Let's be honest. And he wants to do the boxing first so he can beat him. Shut up, Harry. There's my dog in the background. Uh, he wants to beat him in that first. So it leaves that little bit in the mind for when they do have the mixed martial arts fight. Okay. Uh, and again, that wouldn't get sanctioned normally. He's way too big. Uh, now, Nate Diaz... He's a decent boxer. He's as tough as they come. He's got great jiu-jitsu, but he's not known for being the best wrestler. So maybe, could he take Jake Paul down? Is Nate Diaz at the end of his career? You know, this is all, um, it's all smoke and mirrors. This is all just Jake Paul trying to navigate the waters of how he can continue to make money. He can't do it in boxing because in boxing, if he's going to have a big boxing fight, it has to be against a real boxer, Okay. And a real boxer will more than likely beat him, which is not what they want. He can't continue calling up former UFC legends that are retired because that's not doing it anymore either. Yeah, he's winning the fight. God bless him. Fair play to him there. You know, solid win over Anderson, whether or not he's old. Still Anderson Silva. You know, and he beat Tyron Woodley twice. Before that, it was Ben Askren, who's a wrestler. Then it was a basketballer. The point I'm making is he's never fought a boxer. But even still, these former UFC legends, they're not pulling in the pay-per-view numbers. So now he's going to have to fight mixed martial arts, which on paper makes it sound like Jake Paul is doing the right thing. He's being courageous. He's willing to switch sports. But he's not. It's going to be hand-picked opponents. Nate Diaz in a boxing match first that'll be co-promoted by the PFL. And then mixed martial arts. Again, you know, I mean, yeah, Nate Diaz is, is the better mixed martial artist for sure. But size is a real thing. And there's another thing, co-promoting. Co-promoting. I'm not sure I'd want to fight Jake Paul if he was co-promoting the fight. You know, there's going to be a conflict of interest there for sure. You know, now I know MVP, Most Valuable Promotions, that that's... He has and has boxed under so far. He's been the promoter and he's been the fighter. But, you know, two people are going to fight. When two people fight, the promoter arranges a lot of things. Press, interviews, hotel, airport, flights, pickups, all the rest of it, you know. There's nothing to stop that promoter messing with that opponent big time. And if Jay Paul's the promoter, he could arrange that. They, get, they don't get picked up from the airport on time. They're given interviews in the middle of the night. Their PR schedule is just absolutely through the roof, you know. Just lots of little things that would mess with the opponents. Now, that would be pretty dirty, and I'm not saying that Jake would do that, but it does leave the door open for those kind of things. Anthony Pettis has put his name in the hat. Of course, he would love that fight because Anthony Pettis is a real fighter. Anthony Pettis was a champion in the UFC. Anthony Pettis, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and he would take on somebody like Jay Paul and he wants that because it's going to be a big fight with big eyeballs and big pay-per-view numbers. Probably not guaranteed, you know? So if Nate Diaz doesn't happen, then maybe Anthony Pettis will be next. But my problem with Jay Paul all comes down to this is that it's all a fake. It's all a lie. I was talking to Anthony Smith about this on my podcast. We as fighters, we want the toughest test possible. Now, of course, granted, you have to work up to that. You don't automatically start fighting the best people in the world. But as your career progresses, you start taking on harder challenges. In my third ever professional mixed martial arts contest, I accepted a fight with Hernato Babalu Sobral a guy that was a UFC legend, a UFC veteran, many, many fights for the likes of Chuck Liddell, a high-level jiu-jitsu black belt. I accepted that fight in my third ever fight. Now, it didn't go ahead because Babalu got injured, I think, and I ended up fighting the cage race champion. Won that fight by a knockout. But that was a blessing in disguise because Babalu probably would have twisted me up like a pretzel and choked me out unconscious because I didn't know an armbar from an armbar platter, right? But I accepted the fight because I want to challenge myself. I want to push myself. I want to know that I stepped in there and took on the hardest challenges that I could. 
right, and make the most of myself and be able to look at myself in the mirror as a fighter and say, I am playing the game. I'm not, listen, we're all trying to make money. Of course we are. But if you're trying to really be a fighter, you want to be a champion, you want to be a legend, you want to have a history and a legacy in the sport, you need to fight proper people. And he isn't doing that. And that's my only thing. Other than that, I don't have a single problem with it. But here we are. The news is Jake Paul is signed with the PFL. Right now, there is a two-fight offer to Nate Diaz, one in boxing, one in mixed martial arts. I can't imagine a world where Nate Diaz turns that down. I don't think there's many, too many other offers right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Remember, Diaz was supposed to do his own promotion. He might say that he, what was it called, Real Fights or something like that. He might say, hey, I want to co-promote it, you know? Well, you can't have, or maybe you could have three promoters, but it's, it's, it's watering it down quite a lot. I don't think that's what the PFL had in store. But still, it is interesting. It is, it, it, there's a lot to look at, a lot to digest. So he's moving on from trying to become champion of the world in boxing and now he's fighting mixed martial arts. He's going wherever he can, where him and his manager think they can continue the illusion that he's a world-class fighter. And if you're a fan of Jake Paul, I hate to break it to you, but he's not. He's got all the makings, to be honest, of a world-class boxer. He does. I like what he's doing so far. He can punch, he's big, he's strong, he's fast, he gets better all the time. But he's scared to fight an actual boxer. He's scared to fight an actual boxer. Why hasn't he fought a boxer yet? There's plenty of boxers that would take that fight. And that is why my frustration grows all the time. And then on top of that, he hides behind this illusion, as I said, that he's putting fighters first and he's here to make a change and battle and wants us all to make as much money as possible. When on his own promotion, some of the boxers got paid next to fuck all on his own promotion. So there you go. Anyway, J. Paul, PFL, what do you think? What are your thoughts? What are your comments? Say them down there. Subscribe, ring the bell. You take care. See you soon.